Hey, Facebook, how are you today? How are you personally today? Uh, comment, give me a little, give me some likes there. Comment how you're doing today. How's your Friday going? Uh, you got some good plans for the weekend. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you do. Hopefully it's going to be an enjoyable weekend. Hopefully you get out and get some sun. Uh, so you, you got to go out and get some sun. Now I'm going to, this is a little bit of a rant that I have going on. I'm ranting a lot lately uh, just regarding health and sometimes I'm getting a little trouble for it, but uh, so be it, right? So here is a medical policy. All right. I'm not sure if you could see that. Make sure you can see it from Cigna Health Insurance. All right. So on their policy on vitamin D testing. Okay. So on whether or not you get your vitamin D tested and their policy on it. So the, the thing at the top there says insurance is not there to keep help keep you healthy. Honestly, they don't care whether you get healthy or not. They're not <laughs> interested in you being healthy in any way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, if you were healthy, you would have no need for health insurance, and you would be upset at having to pay for it all the time, which is, frankly, what a lot of healthy people, they're upset that they have to pay for health insurance when they're healthy, and they're subsidizing the sick people. Nothing against the sick people. Understand they need some help. Um, but uh, healthy people don't want to pay for insurance for sick people. Um, but what I want to show you is this policy says that they – just understand this. Vitamin D is an absolutely essential nutrient to your health. It's, it's extremely important. It's implicated in, in hundreds of different diseases, and uh, it is something that you absolutely have to have to, to, be, to be healthy and well. It is a vitamin, vitamin meaning vital, uh, vital to life. So vitamin D is extremely important. And uh, you can see all the research on it. You can go into PubMed or Medline. You can see, I mean, literally, if you went into PubMed, you'd find that vitamin D is probably talked about in probably 200,000 different uh, research articles on uh, out there. It's ex high levels of vitamin D, not too high, obviously, but high levels of vitamin D are absolutely extremely important for immune system regulation. Uh, especially in autoimmune diseases. And why, the reason I'm doing this video this morning, and I'm going to have to run and see a patient here in a few minutes, but Cigna has been denying uh, when we send somebody to get vitamin D testing, which we do on a regular basis because it's so important to someone's health for so many different problems, whether it be arthritis, autoimmune issues, thyroid issues, um, osteoporosis, you, you name it. Uh, vitamin D is extremely important. So uh, I can't even possibly name them all, so I won't try. I just bore you to death, right? So, but I want to show you this. They've been denying the testing. So, when it comes back, we submit it to somebody's insurance, and it comes back, and they go, "We've determined that it's not medically necessary." So, my insurance person downloaded their policy on this today, vitamin D testing, and it says the only reason they're going to cover it is for known osteoporosis, known condition that impacts the ability of the body to use available vitamin D, and clinical concerns of vitamin D intoxication, which means too much vitamin D. So there's only three reasons that they cover that testing, yet it is something that's extremely important to your health and wellness and your well-being. So if they're not going to cover something that is important to, for you to be healthy, then who's that going to fall on? It is going to fall on you. All right. It is important that you know your vitamin D levels. Uh, I've talked about in other videos, the definition of health, the World Health Organization uses this definition. It appears in Dorland's Medical Dictionary. Is, um, basically, it talks about function. Uh, the, uh, the definition of health, it, health is a state of optimum physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So what that means is just because you feel good and you look good doesn't mean you're healthy at all. You could have cancer and... Uh, um, you could have cancer and not know it. Paul, I, I, I agree with you. No kidding. Sickness is an industry. Um, uh, so much. Uh, that, that's the problem. Uh, healthcare is health or per that definition is optimum function. Uh, the healthcare industry is a lie anyway, because healthcare is the restoration. And this is in the dictionary, by the way, is the restoration and maintenance of health. So if you go to the doctor and they say, Hey, I'm going to, and your doctor says, my goal is to restore and maintain perfect function. You have found a fantastic doctor. Now, I'm not saying that's possible, but wouldn't it be nice if they had the goal of restoring and uh, maintaining health? If they actually even had the goal of doing that, it would be unbelievable, right? 
But that's not the goal. So what that means is that it's not health care in any way. It's sick care. And this policy on vitamin D testing proves that that's not what they're after. They're after just maintaining illness, maintaining illness, not maintaining wellness, maintaining illness. So listen, you should get your vitamin D checked a couple of times a year. Uh, the vitamin D council says that uh, healthy levels are going to be between 50 and 100 I, uh, on, your, on your lab test between 50 and 100. If you have an autoimmune condition, that might need to be higher, maybe between 70 and 100. You can become toxic to vitamin D. But uh, folks, if you are, and I, I'm not knocking you have insurance. I know there's people out there. I'm going to get lambasted. I'm sure, you know, if this goes viral like some of my other videos, uh, I'll have people commenting going, my health insurance saved my life and everything. I get it. I, I'm, I'm glad for it. I'm glad you have it. Uh, you know, if you were rushed to the hospital having a heart attack, my God, if you didn't have health insurance, it could be, it, it could be catastrophic uh, to somebody's finances, to their family. So I'm glad that people have health insurance. But if you are looking for health insurance to help you be healthy, you are absolutely barking up the wrong tree. They're not going to do it. It's not in their interest. Um, Actually, I got nobody's knocked on my door to tell me the patients here. So, uh, get this right. So, the American Medical Association. Most people think that that's a bunch of doctors that sit around and write medical policy, folks. It is not. Less than fifteen percent of all doctors belong to the AMA. Less than fifteen percent, and they give away free memberships to retired doctors and to students. So, of the fifteen percent of people, doctors that belong to the AMA, uh, a, a, a large proportion of them are retired and students. Doctors do not belong to the AMA. You go, all right, well, where does this AMA get all their funding? You go to downtown Chicago and see this, you know, this uh, skyscraper of a building uh, owned by the AMA, and you say, well, where do they, where does the AMA get their funding then? About 75% of their funding comes from the Mar American Pharmaceutical Advertising Council. So the AMA is getting their funding from the pharmacy, from the pharmaceutical companies. And you go, okay, what's that got to do with insurance? Well, the AMA writes the codes. They're the one who writes the codes about what's going to be paid. So the AMA writes your CPT codes and your ICD-10 codes, and these are your diagnostic and your procedural codes, the codes that determine whether or not you can have something paid by your insurance. So the AMA writes those codes, and the AMA is funded by the pharmaceutical company. So what do you think that they're going to want to fund? They're going to want to fund pharmaceuticals. They're not going to want to fund treatment. They're not going to want to fund health. They're going to want to fund things that are going to promote uh, sickness and disease. Uh, because as uh, somebody, Paula, commented earlier, um, it, it's an industry. And, and folks, look, I'm not, I, let's, be, let's be real here, okay? I mean, everybody, everybody wants to call everybody out for them being a hypocrite. So I'm just going to say it. I'm a hypocrite, okay? Um, I'm here. I come to work every day. Uh, I, I need to feed my family. Uh, I want to, I want to be successful, but I come to work because I want to help people, but we all have to make money. Everybody who would comment on me would say a uh, comment on this and say, health is just about making money. Folks, I got 18 employees. They all want to make a living. They all have to, they all have to feed their families and stuff. So anybody would comment on that. You could just keep it to yourself. I already know and call me a hypocrite if you want, but, uh, I, I already get it, but we are at our clinic at least. And there are physicians and clinics around this country who want to truly help improve someone else's life. Um, and if you look at it from a true health standpoint, you're going to get a much better, uh, uh, you're going to get a much better outcome. If you're going to promote it, uh, come at it from a sickness and disease standpoint, well, then you're going to get more sickness and disease. And I'm telling you, that's what the AMA and the insurance companies are about and the pharmaceuticals are about. I'm not even telling you that they're not even beneficial at some times. If I got hit by a bus, by God, do not bring me back to my office. Take me to the hospital. And I might even say, hey, you know what, I'm in a lot of pain. Can you give me something for all this pain? You know, at, at that point, those things are needed. There's diseases that we don't know of any cure at this point. And again, we thank our, 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 the sick care community for that. But the sick care community is not going to promote health, okay? I mean, don't, just don't think that that's the case. Actually, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to look for it while I have you here, but I had an article about the uh, – about how it was a, an article about how much education doctors need, medical doctors need in order to graduate medical school in uh, how much education they need to have in nutrition.
folks, your doctor's not even going to know about this. Do you know they have zero requirement? It's not required that they even take one single class to graduate medical school in, in nutrition. They don't have to take one class in nutrition to graduate medical school. So you want to know why this isn't covered, right? So vitamin D, it's vital to your health. Go out, spend some time in the sun this weekend. Um, uh, especially in the northern climate, you know, as we get north of the equator, the further you get north of the equator, the less UVB rays you have coming down. So the less uh, vitamin D you're going to get through your skin. You you truly need vitamin D. It's best to get an emulsified, if you have to take it, uh, because you're not out in the sun, it's best to get an emulsified version of vitamin D. Uh, that way you can... Um, that way you can absorb it better. How much do you need? Uh, I don't want, I'm not going to give you advice on that. I'm going to give you a general rule, but this is not medical advice over the internet. So um, that, that would be wrong and unethical of me to give you medical advice over the internet. But if you take your body weight, and if you're watching this from overseas, frankly, I don't know the metric system. So uh, take your body weight. Let's say you weighed uh, 150 pounds. Okay, 150 pounds. Multiply that by 35. You have 50, 250. That's about how many IUs would be a good maintenance dose. That'd be 5,250 IUs a day would be a good maintenance dose. So take your body weight in pounds, multiply it by 35, and that would give you a, a good amount of, uh, just kind of about an appropriate amount of vitamin D on a daily basis. So that's IUs. So if you say, I'm taking 1,000 a day, well, understand if you're taking a thousand a day, you only weigh 35 pounds. Like it doesn't, that's not enough, right? Um, and it, maybe my math was off on that. It was just, so um, you want to take your body weight, multiply it by 35, and that would be a, a round, roundabout amount to take in I use on a daily basis. So if you're outside in the sun, hey, Kodiak, Alaska, you're pretty far north. Uh, you definitely need to get some vitamin D because it's not you're not going to get it from the sun much in uh, in Alaska. I sh I, I've never been to Alaska, so maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong there. So um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Get out there and enjoy your weekend. I hope it's a I hope it's a great weekend for you. I'm uh, going to be building some shelves in my uh, in my living room this weekend. I'm excited about that. Uh, comment, let us know what you're doing. Let's see, body weight times 35 equals dose. Yeah, give or take, okay? Because it's very, very difficult to find a place where you can get 5,250 units. So you could round that down to 5,000, uh, if depending on the how the pills come for you. Or you can round it up to 6,000. Maybe you take 4,000 one day, 6,000 the next, 4,000, 6,000, 4,000, 6,000. So you're averaging around that 5,000. Um, now, if you are watching this and you weigh like 400 pounds, um, not commenting on your weight, doesn't matter, but understand 400 pounds times 35, that's 14,000 units a day. That may be high. Uh, I, I, you'd have to keep, a, keep an eye on your blood work on that to make sure. You do not want on your blood work, you do not want it to get up and stay up over 100. It can be up over 100 for short periods of time and it not bother you, but for it to stay up, uh, can, vitamin D can become toxic. So you do not want, let's see, having lupus is hard to get out in the sun and do as much as you can. Good lupus, it's autoimmune disease. You've got to have high levels of vitamin D. And yes, you may not be able to get in the sun. So that means you've got to consume vitamin D. Vitamin D is an immune system regulator. Your T regulatory cells help, help mitigate, help bring down autoimmune responses. They help keep autoimmunity in check. So if somebody has an autoimmune issue, vitamin D is super important to keep that high. Also, glutathione is, a, is an immune system regulator. So that's something to also make sure you're getting glutathione. We'll talk about that another day. Anyway, uh, shout out to everybody watching. I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Take care. And uh, please, 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 please do not count on your insurance company to keep you healthy. They just do not care about health. They only want to manage disease and sickness. They're a business. That's not a surprise to anybody. I get it. Uh, they're a business, and they're a business of sick care, not health care. Take it easy, Facebook. Hope you have a great weekend.